So you're installing an aftermarket car audio amplifier and you've done your research, you know that you're going to need to run a large power wire from the battery of your vehicle back to wherever the amplifier is installed. But there are some mistakes here that you can make that you should try to avoid in order to get the best performance and the most reliability. What are they? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's take a look. Now, as I'm sure many of you guys know, a lot of times the battery is under the hood of the vehicle. And that means in order for us to run this large power wire from the battery to the inside of the vehicle, we have to go through the firewall. So best practice number one is we want to make sure that we use something like a grommet. Now, these come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Of course, you want to get one that is sized to fit the wire that you're going to be running inside the vehicle. And like anything, there are simple versions and there are more complex versions. Now, you can get a simple version for less than a dollar, but just for a couple of dollars, you can get something like this. And since it's just a couple of dollars, I like to go with something a little bit more robust. And this is more of a cable gland. And the way that this works is it has a little tightening ring that we can tighten on one side and have the sheet metal in between here. And if we take this other side off, you can see that this has sort of an angle to it. And on the inside of this piece, it has a cone. And the way that this works is we'll put our wire through and there's a nice little rubber grommet inside this. And when we actually tighten this down, that cone sandwiches those fingers tighter and tighter on the wire. The reason I like these a lot more is these are a lot more weather resistant. They're a lot more reliable. They can handle the high temperatures of the engine compartment. They just tend to be a lot more robust and last and be more reliable over the time frame of a vehicle. Now, best practice number two, we wanna make sure that we use a good reliable connection at the battery for our wire. A lot of times this means using a crimp on lug like this, and I definitely recommend that if you're using a lug like this, you don't wanna be using one of those hammer tools to try to get this sandwiched onto the wire. Those tend to not work as well. You wanna get yourself a nice hydraulic crimper. You can get one nowadays for under $50. It's definitely a valuable tool to have if you're planning on doing car audio. I'll put a link to one down in the video description. Now using something like a crimp on lug is for when you have a nice spot that you can easily tighten this lug onto the battery terminal, the existing OEM battery terminal within that vehicle. But most of the time, something like that is not available. So for that reason, you wanna use something like this, an aftermarket battery terminal. Now I did a full review video on this particular battery terminal before. This is the ultimate battery terminal from New Concepts. And really quick, I wanna tell you a little bit about this because they are our show sponsor for this episode. So the ultimate battery terminal is really cool because it gives us a zero gauge, four gauge, and eight gauge output for all of our aftermarket accessories. What's really unique about the ultimate battery terminal though is we can use these post adapters on the battery terminal. And what's nice about that is that makes it so all you really have to do is you just take the OEM battery terminal off of the battery and you install this new battery terminal. And now you have a nice post that you can install the OEM battery connection back onto. Now previously you had to use this in the side mounted orientation, but New Concepts did just release this new feature here. This is their top post adapter. So now instead of having to turn that connection and put it on the side, you can just reposition it right above the battery. These definitely make installation a breeze if they're compatible with your vehicle. If you guys wanna learn more about these, check out the link down in the video description. Now the next best practice for running our power wire for our amplifiers is we of course want to make sure that we use a fuse somewhere along the wire. Now people often get confused. They think that the fuse is for protecting the gear. The fuse is actually for protecting the wiring. Imagine that on this fuse here, we have another wire that's connected to the battery. And then imagine we have this wire going through our vehicle and to the amplifier. What happens is if this wire grounds out, if it becomes cut or somehow touches ground in the vehicle, this fuse is going to fail and blow, which thus will save the wiring. It's not going to allow this wiring to start on fire. But here's the important detail. What you have to consider is that wire that is between the fuse and the battery is technically unprotected. This is very important. What I wanna stress here is in a lot of instruction manuals for amplifier kits and amplifiers, they will say, oh, you wanna keep your fuse within 18 inches of the battery. But that's not actually the important detail. The important detail is you want the fuse to be as close to the battery as possible. And again, the reasoning for that is because that link from the fuse to the battery is unprotected. 
So I've switched this wire over to this side here. So let's imagine this is our wire connection between the battery and the fuse. I'd like to have it be really short. And the other thing that I like to do is I like to make sure when I'm designing a bracket for this fuse block to mount to, I like to have a couple of spots for zip ties to actually secure the wiring also to the bracket. That way, if the wiring were to come loose from the fuse here, it has nowhere to go. It can't come out and potentially move over and touch ground because it's literally zip tied in place. Best practice number four, make sure that you guys are using the proper connection at the amplifier. There are amplifiers still on the market that require you to use a fork style spade connection that you crimp onto the wire and then that little fork goes underneath the screw and you tighten it down. Guys, I don't wanna see this anymore where you just strip some of the wire and you kind of pull the ends apart and you kind of just jam it underneath there. That is not the proper way to do things. That can end up being a poor connection, which means resistance and resistance means heat, which means I've seen a lot of times where those connections will literally start to droop and kind of sag as they get super hot and that plastic melts the connection. Guys, don't do that. Make sure that you get a proper connection on that wire. Now, the more common terminals that we see lately are where there's a set screw that you use an Allen key or a Phillips screwdriver to tighten down. And in that case, I like to use wire ferrules. I have a full video that I did about these several, several years ago if you guys want to learn more. What these are is a very thin metal that goes around all the wire strands. So now when you go to add this into the amplifier, you don't have any of those loose strands that tend to stick out. And also because this is a very thin metal, you can easily crimp it onto the wire itself and it will take the shape of the terminal as you connect that set screw down into the wire. Another best practice here for when it comes to running our amplifier power wire, and you guys might have heard this before, but I do want to go a little bit more in detail, is when you're running your RCA connections, in other words, the signal from your head unit back to the amplifier in the back of the vehicle, or if you have any sort of signal cables running in the vehicle, you want to keep them on the opposite side of the vehicle from the power wire. Now there is a footnote here. You guys have this question quite often when I do the amplifier racks and you know the RCA wire will end up being somewhat close to the power wire. In today's day and age, it's really not as critical as it used to be. Amplifiers and DSPs are designed a lot better with more noise rejection. As long as we're using quality RCA wires, we're a lot less likely to end up with noise. But I'm just saying it's a best practice if you do have the option and the time to run the signal wires and the power wire on different sides of the vehicle, it is still best practice to do so. But at the end of the day, if they're close to each other in the amplifier rack location, if you're using high quality gear and signal wires, you're likely not going to have an issue, but still a best practice. Now there are definitely tons of other important details that we need to take into account when we're designing the electrical system for our car audio system. So if you guys wanna learn more about that, I have a full playlist here on screen. A special thanks to New Concepts for sponsoring this video. If you wanna learn more about the Ultimate Battery Terminal, check out the link down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you for watching.